All right, guys, here we go. Four of the coolest radios that you're going to see any given day. IC706 Mark II, Variant 2. We have the Doomsday radio that you guys are pretty much familiar with. The Zygu 6100. And now we got the G90. The Zygu G90. Running FT8CN on my phone right now. Having a good time. A lot of you guys have been questioning and asking me about some of the setups that I had with the radios that I have. And so now I want to go ahead and um, start talking about very affordable modular all band all mode communication centers. Um, I've been looking at some videos and uh, some of the more experienced hams, they're, they're working with some of the radios like the TX500, the experimental prototype amplifiers and battery packs and things of that nature. And uh, when you kind of look at the overall price of those systems, you know, some of those systems can be astronomical in price. I mean, maybe well into the three and $4,000 range. And that made me get to thinking, I said to myself, I want to be the guy that shares with hams economical uh, solutions to, so they can do all of the digital modes that we see a lot of the guys doing, a lot of the popular digital modes. I want us to be able to do QRO, QRP, and 20 watt amateur radio, SSB, CW, digital modes, WSJTX, and a wide variety of other systems. So today we're gonna go through a few radios that I have that I believe that are affordable, a lot of radios that I believe that are kinda old, and but we've been able to make those radios smart with parts like the Digirig. This isn't going to be a long video, but I want to get to the point. I want to make this video have a lot of meat and potatoes to it. Now, you guys already know about the Doomsday Radio. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check out the Doomsday Radio for the 857 Delta. And if you guys remember, in that radio, I made the largest claim for all band, all mode, all digital. That radio is phenomenal. With the Mobilink TNC and the Digirig with the Yesu 857 with my tablet, I was able to do a wide variety of... Um, a ham radio operation from satellite all the way down to wind link to JSA call and FT8 some of the systems that we love dearly but the second radio that I wanted to add to my collection was the IC706 the Mark II Golf I, I really like this radio and so I want to show you some of the things that I did to this radio and I think that you guys might find it to be cool one of the first things I did was integrate a 7 inch screen with a Raspberry Pi 4 and with this, I ended up doing some of the portable zero rails on that, on that radio in particular. And what we ended up coming up with was portable zero rails and they ended up making a battery box. This battery box typically goes with the 818, but the nice guys down at portable zero, um, I asked them if they could make a box for me so that I could do some cable management because I hate cables. Um, so with that, when he made the box, he sent it out to me. It fit the, the, the diameter and the size of the IC706 Mark II. And I was able to stuff all of the wires for the Digirig and all of the USB-C wires inside of the box right here. If you guys can take a look at it. See if we can get closer. Go all the way around. As you guys can see right now, we're running the uh, Raspberry Pi on the 7-inch screen right there. I'm using some regular old power supplies to power it up. Oh, and man, we're getting so much noise from this slow scan TV that we're trying to run right here. Let me see if I can go ahead and um, see if we can see what we're recording. Or maybe just even drop. I'll drop down the volume on it, all right? So you guys can get a real good idea. Let me fix that because presentation is key. All right. So right now we're running some slow scan TV with this Raspberry Pi. And... I'm also doing FT8, I'm also doing GSA call, and I'm also doing a wide variety of the digital modes with this setup right here. I like to call this radio the ultimate polder rig. Another thing that I'm running on this radio is I'm running a GPS so I can get all my time for WSJTX. With this little keyboard from Micro Center, man, I was able to have a lot of fun with this. I love this radio. This radio is uh, UHF, VHF, and uh, HF, and uh, it has an onboard computer. This is a 7-inch screen from Amazon, and a Raspberry Pi 4, and that Raspberry Pi 4 was something that I picked up at Micro Center uh, when it had one in stock for, um, I'd like to say, uh, 42 bucks. But what's the price point on a radio like this? The radio itself, to me, was about 350 bucks used from one of my Elmers. 
The Raspberry Pot was 42 bucks. The Portable Zero Rails were about 150 bucks. And the keyboard was about 19 bucks. And having said that, I'm able to have a full... This radio can do POTA. This radio can do SSB. This radio can do digital modes. And so I think this is a good POTA radio. More so, it's not as portable as the 857 Delta that I'm running right now. My second radio, as you guys all know, we've been running the GTAC. And with the GTAC and one simple wire and the 6100, I mean, it's simple. You know, this is a good economical uh, setup for anybody that's trying to get in the game and do some soda. This GTAC was about 200 bucks on eBay used and, and from the used uh, refurb market. And you guys know the 6100 is about 60, 600 bucks, maybe on sale for 579 at times, but this is just a very good economical setup for anybody who wants to get in the game and do digital. The cool thing about it, as you guys know, it just connects by one USB cable. And you've all seen this bad boy here, but my latest project has been the Zygu G90. I haven't come up with a name for it. I guess I called it the G90 baby. Because the reason why I like this G90 is because I like the 3D printed uh, sound scoop that I got from printables. But one thing I like about this radio in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and take this loose because I was running um, some FT8CN on my on my um, cell phone. But I'm gonna go ahead and take that loose for us one second so you guys can really take a look at how I got this G90 set up. First and foremost, I have the stand and the speaker on it, but I like this battery that I was able to get fabricated. Well, basically I fabricated this, uh, this power pole and this is a i think a 12 volt 6 amp hour battery that i got from amazon and if you look very close at this battery i'm going to shut it down I, I have a button that goes off and if you take a look at it here's the battery right here um i got this battery from Al, uh, amazon it's a talent cell i ended up making these power poles myself so i'm kind of proud of that um and this i put some velcro on the bottom and this is the form factor that I like to run. Now, if this ain't modular, I don't know what is. And that's simple. Turn on the power, turn the radio back on, and now we're back in the mix with the G90. Um, this is a very attractive, very nice, cool little radio that you guys can see right here. But these are some of the radios that I'm running. This is my setup. Um, this is my new backpack radio that I like to pop on phone parks and do some chasing. But I'm going to do some summits on it this weekend. This is another one of my soda go-to radios that we're running viral AC on right now. And you guys know I'm a savage. I'll carry this big baby uh, anytime and any place. And right now, this is my Poda radio. Oh, she's so sweet. That IC706. I'm falling in love with this radio, but the thing I'm falling in love with most is the actual, just the Raspberry Pi and how it's functioning so well with the seven inch screen. All right, guys. So I know that this raid, this video could have been a lot more detailed. I know it could have been, you know, uh, had a lot of bells and whistles in it, but I wanted to get it out. I wanted to talk to people about affordability. Some of these radios are 23 years old. Um, the 706 and the 857, I think they came out right around 2000, 2001. The 6100 that recently came out, it's a less expensive SDR radio, and the G90 is stolen my heart. I really like the G90. I love everything about that radio in particular. I love the fan, I love the stand, and um, I know a lot of guys talk about having premium radios, but it seems like to me that um, Zygo has really stepped up and given an affordable product to the amateur radio community. If I was a guy and I was new into soda, I would definitely recommend the 6100. I would even recommend the uh, G90 to any new ham because right now at 445 with a, 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 a deal on a tripod and the fan and the stand, I mean, that is, uh, that's a great deal. So make ham radio affordable. Um, know that you can do anything that you see guys with the premium radios are doing with amateur radio. Um, and as you can see, I'm doing a little FT8 with some of these... Uh, MFJ antennas and this is just a portable setup in the back of my car uh, Getting ready to do some some car camping for the night and do some radio all night um, But hey, man, um, this is the Metro Atlanta ham um, I had this on my mind. I want to talk to you guys about it. I hope you guys like the video I hope you guys like the radios and um, I hope you guys keep hamming on 
Um, and that's all I got for this one. Um, this may not have been one of the best radios, but uh, videos that I've done, but hopefully it has the quality uh, as far as the con content is concerned because these radios are very beautiful, very modular. And um, I like to say that tinkering around the house, I was able to build some systems that are very fun to use. And I think that's one thing that we lose focus on, the fact that amateur radio is fun. And for me, putting these radios together and using the GTAC as my real base, um, and, and being able to use my phone to do digital modes also. So, you guys 73 and uh, simplify and uh, you guys have a great one. Bye-bye.